Greetings. How is everyone doing? Welcome to my Monday Night Live. My name is Ishma Perez. I am the author of Our Cosmic Origin, a book that reveals galactic history and the connection uh, between the Earth Alliance and the Galactics. And um, I just want everyone to know that I am so happy and thrilled to be here today. Today's actually a special night for me because um, I'm actually going to get the opportunity to be interviewed by George Norrie on Coast to Coast tonight. This is something that I've actually been working for for quite some time. So before we get to the subject, as I give you guys an update on the Earth Alliance and Y Hats and their um, victory over the Cabal, um, great things are going to be unfolding from what I understand. You know, it's we've been all waiting for this day, right? The calm before the storm. <laughs> First and foremost, I would like to apologize. I did notice that I accidentally put 5 o'clock p.m. when in essence, I always go live around 6. So for those that uh, underst understood that it was, a, uh, it was a minor mistake on my end, I am not perfect. Um, again, half the time, I don't even know the day of the week, the time of the day. Um, uh, thank you for all the love. I see all the likes. And so, you know, my, my mind is just in the, the space of the no zone, okay? So, you know, that's, that's me. I'm wired differently, all right? Just like many of you are, right? <laughs> so this day in history, uh, but before I get to this day in history, I do want to say that today is March the 11th. And the reason why I remember that date is because I've been, you know, excited about my interview on Coast to Coast tonight. From 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., of course, it's going to be broadcasted worldwide. So it's going to be different timings depending on which time zone you're in. But um, two things about myself before I get into the topic. Well, I don't know if I should share this, but I'm actually very timid and shy. It took me a while to break out of my shell. Um, if you would have asked me to stand in front of a, a crowd and speak about anything uh, a few years ago, even three years ago, before I came into the scene, I would have been very timid, all right? I would have been very timid and very afraid. All my life, I'm going to be vulnerable here, guys. All my life, I've had uh, stage fright. And so it took me a while to, you know, just understand that it's not that hard to speak in front of an audience, you know? So again, that's probably one of the reasons why it took me forever to... Uh, you know, go on social media and do lives and everything because I, it took me a while. You know, I was really just afraid to speak in public for many, many years. So, yeah, you know, I wrote a book and, and due to the fact that my book was about to get published uh, back in 20, the end of 2021, the beginning of 2022, I believe my book was published at the end of 2021. I had to break out of that, you know, uh, fear, that uh, comfort zone of just not being able to speak in public doing lives and addressing, you know, a large crowd. It took me a while though. All right. Through practice and perfect, through practice and repetition, I, I think I'm learning how to uh, speak to an audience and um, to take it and even a step further, you know, the first time I spoke in front of a crowd at a, uh, at an expo, I think it was at the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022, and I did actually post this on my YouTube channel. Um, I was very timid. I, I was very nervous. You know, you could actually watch the video on yourself. You just have to rewind. It's one of the first videos that I posted on my channels. I was sitting on the chair. I was wearing a, a tie and I was wearing a, a necklace with like a green um, stone. So it took me a while. It took me like 15 minutes to warm up. You know, I, I was very, very nervous. That was the first time. I've ever had to speak in front of, I think there was about 80, 80 some or 100 people there in that room. And I was very, very nervous. And then, of course, as I was able to go to more of these events and speak more at conferences, I have learned how to eventually master the art of speaking in public, uh, which took a lot of practice. You know, practice does make perfect. So, yeah, that's one thing about me. Another thing about me is that... Um, I don't necessarily um, like to, you could say, I don't like going to public settings, okay? Because I am an intuitive empath. Every time I am in a public situation where there's a lot of people around, I tend to pick up on their energies, their thoughts, and their emotions. 
And so it's very hard for me to be in a public setting. So what I do before I, uh, whether it's a conference I'm attending or whether it's, you know, the local store, grocery store, <laughs> where there's people around, I have to actually shield myself. Otherwise, I'm going to be picking up on people's emotions and people's thoughts because I am a strong empath. So that's another thing about myself that I wanted to share with you guys. So today in history, March 11, today in history, um, if we go back to the year, the, the Fukushima nuclear disaster, I don't know if you guys remember, back in 2011, on March 11, 2011, the Fukushima, Fukushima nuclear disaster happened. So the largest earthquake ever recorded in Japan causes massive devastation. And the ensuing tsunami decimates the Tohoku region of northeastern Hachu. Uh, on top of the already horrific destruction and loss of life, the natural disaster also gives rise to a nuclear disaster at the Fukushima the Daishi nuclear plant, plant. The Fukushima disaster is considered the second worst nuclear disaster in history, forcing the relocation of over 100,000 people. During the emergency, each of the three operational nuclear reactors at the Fukushima plant shut down successfully, but the backup power and cooling system failed. As a result, residual heat caused fuel rods in all three reactors to gradually melt down. As crews searched, the rubble for survivors and the nation reeled for the earth, from the earthquake and ensuing tsunami, the nuclear disaster unfolded over the course of several days. The facilities were reactors 1 and 3, which were located and exploded on March 12 and March the 14th of 2011 respectively prompting the government to execute to evacuate everyone within a 20 kilometer radius another explosion in the building housing reactor 2 on march 15 released even more radiation and thousands of people left their homes as workers used helicopters waters cannons and seawater pumps to try to cool the overheating facility so this is a, an unfortunate, an unfortunate event, I would say. A hundred thousand people uh, that were casualties that you know resulted in casualties as a result of this um, event that took place in 2011. Okay, so to give you guys, before we get to the update, how the Earth Alliance and the Y Hats are about to roll out. The storm is here, guys. They're about to roll out. They've been trying to do for the last five years. And um, before I get to that, to those um, those topics, um, I do want to remind you guys that the secret government is coming very, very soon, revealing the secret history of the cabal dating back to Babylon and what actually took place between Ham, the, gr the great grandfather of Nimrod, and Marduk the son of Enki, in order to restore the Leviathan seat of power. After, of course, Enlil, uh, Seuss, destroyed any um, evidence of the seed or the Leviathan serpent seed during the flood. So it, it's really an amazing book. It really shares the, uh, the real history of the earth. And then I'm also going to be publishing soon. It was supposed to happen last, uh, what was it, Friday, but... I still needed to edit it a little bit more, the uh, transmissions from the Blue Avians. So that's coming. And I also want to acknowledge some of the people that are in the house. I want to say thank you to MJF, Neo, Chastian and Rose, uh, Pat Vargas, PB Mor Morlene, Douglas, uh, 5GCR. Uh, is it King Prince of Peace? I love that. Jacob Combell. Edward is in the house. Laura May, Lori May's in the house, Diana, Joanna, Unicorns and Dragons, Galactic Angel, Andromeda Daisy, Sam Griffin, Amanda, Tony Lopez, and the list goes on. Over six, almost 700 Galactic Jedis in the house. Thank you guys for being here and joining me on a Monday evening on the 11th of March. All right, so with that have said... 
let's talk about what's happening from behind the scenes. As you guys know, this is a an interdimensional warfare uh, taking place on different levels of reality. Um, as I mentioned in many of my interviews and, and as I revealed in the in the uh, Art Cosmic Origin, uh, the war that is taking place here on the third dimensional level of reality is a war that has actually uh, comes from a higher level of reality and is now coming to an end. As you guys know, the galactic war has ended in favor of the light. And so the Earth Alliance in their end collaboration with the uh, Galactic Alliance, right? Not the Galactic Federation. They've been reorganized, uh, are about to end the last bit of evil on this planet. So I'm going to go ahead and share some uh, important information with you guys to back that up, to show you guys that things are still going forward for the Y-Hats, <clears throat> despite what M -N MSN, whatever it's called, you know, NBC, CBS, um, the Mockingbird Media says, uh, this is what's actually taking place. So what many people in the world don't know is that the, you know, Cabal had written another scenario. OK, so these guys, because they do play dirty. All right. Bear in mind that they were stopped, but their intentions was the uh, they were supposed to initiate another plan. D.E.M.I.C. I have to speak in code now uh, that was supposed to um, thwart what's going to happen in November. Right, because they know that Brandon is done. I don't even think Brandon is allowed to run again. I think they realize that since he is on his sixth clone, that to the robot is malfunctioning. Um, we all know that Kamala H A R R I S is also a joke. Um, and I don't even think Big Mike. I don't even think Big Mike has the the chance to run against forty five. Um, as you guys know, 45 is building momentum. Uh, but it is believed, according to the you know statistics, that 45 has over 65% of the votes in all of the states. And this also includes the the what they call the red state, not the red states, the blue states, okay? The blue, the far left states. And the reason being is because of the fact that the great awakening is actually causing a ripple effect. Through the collective mind of humanity, all right, we are we all share a planetary mind hive. So the more the people awaken to the truth of what's happening, um, the more the sleepers are going to finally get it, and it's going to click for them as well. So that's what's happening right now, um, especially after the last three years, three and a half years of Brandon, uh, of you know the the, the the circus show that that he that he um, showed for the last three years. I don't think people want him back. Okay. Um, so what's happening is that the let's just say that the, their last card was not Project Bluebeam, but was a plan D E M I C. Okay, um, and the scenario was going to be a hundred times more than to what happened in 2019, right? I'm going to speak in codes. We you know prior to that. Okay, the scenario was going to actually supposed to, you know destroy, I'm just going to use keywords, right? Eliminate 98% or 99% of the world population. But luckily, the Earth Alliance stopped them, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and continue. So it was supposed to be 100 times worse. Um, one dose and the people of the world would die within 72 hours, okay? In the events that these, you know, people would have released this last chance you know, this last thing that they were going to release, 99% um, of the world would have died within 72 hours, okay? So let's be happy that JFK, who is still alive, by the way, I know I had to check a lot of sources. I had to actually consult with a lot of people um, about if, because we know JFK Jr., you know, is alive. But the question is, is JFK Sr. alive? Well, there is a video that shows evidence when 45 was in office in 2016, when he did his second, I believe, or first State of the Union address, there was an older gentleman on a wheelchair. I don't know if you guys saw when 45 did his second State of the Union address, there was a older gentleman with like a little beret hat that was on the wheelchair in the first row. 
where 45 came down after addressing the nation and shook his hand. Ladies and gentlemen, it has come to my attention that not only JFK faked his death, Jr., but also Sr., okay, as well as, as well as many other celebrities that were not aligned with the cabal, okay? And I wouldn't be surprised if Marilyn Monroe, I would say she, she's part of that. Marilyn Monroe was a lion. She was a white hat, by the way, guys, all right? It's not so much that she, her and, uh, you know, JFK uh, Sr. were playing hanky-panky. A lot of the times, the reason why they were in isolation was because there was a lot of sensitive information that was related between JFK Jr. and Marilyn Monroe, okay? And the evidence is all going to come forward. And yes, she did eat age due to the fact that she did not partake in Andy Andrina, uh, I can't even say that word, you know what I mean. The young, you know, the, the, the stuff that the uh, powers that were in the celebrities used to, used to take that they extracted from the little ones to look younger. Right. She didn't partake in that. So she actually aged. Okay. So when she reveals herself, Marilyn Monroe, she's going to look her age. Okay. She didn't take and she didn't cheat. Right. She didn't cheat. <laughs> All right. So let me continue here. So our team, we're referring to the, uh, the entire Earth Alliance. Our team has read this scenario. This scenario is 100 times worse than it, what would have been in 2019. Um, let's be happy that JFK, JFK Jr., and K Caroline, uh, as well as, you know, they call, okay, within the alliance, within the group of the Earth Alliance, they call her Queen Diana, all right? She's not Princess Diana because she is the real queen. She's the real uh, due to the fact that she does come from the bloodline, right, of the original Mary Magdalene, Jesus Christ's Holy Grail lineage, um, she is actually the queen of England, the rightful queen to the throne of England, okay? It's it's not the guy, you know, who sits, who's actually going to be, oh, I, I, I almost uh, jumped the gun here. Okay, let me just put it this way, guys. About 100,000 cabal people are being indicted right now as I speak. And we're talking about not the, the originals, but their clones as well. So they are all, as I speak, there's a huge roundup taking place. And this is where I believe personally that um, you guys should have two weeks worth of food supply because the curtain is about to fall down. There's going to be a mass arrest of over 100,000 individuals. And yes, it is going to be public information that the the incubant in England, right? King C-H-A-R-L-E-S. I don't even want to call him that. He's not a king, right? That clone. Um, they're going to pass it as if he have, has cancer. And then they're all, they're also going to say that he didn't make it. So that when they announce that, that's going to be the domino effect. That's going to set the same, the chain reaction for all of those um, puppets and, you know, criminals that were, uh, associated with this international cabal, okay? So the Earth Alliance, they call Princess Diana queen, okay? And the 900 celebrities who faked their death and went in a witness protection program, did you guys know that? That the 900 celebrities that did not partake in the island, that did not partake in the trying to look young at the expense of the little ones, um, they all went into protection programs, okay? And they're all actually coming out and revealing the truth behind Hollywood, okay? Some of these, some of these are people like, um, what's his name? Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey is one of them, okay? Brad Pitt, I know Brad Pitt is still there, but Brad Pitt is, is, is a good guy, by the way. The reason he divorced Angelina Jolie is because she was seduced. She sold her soul to the devil by going to that forbidden island. That's all I'm going to say, okay? But yeah, Jim Carrey has been exposing the Matrix uh, for many, many years, okay? And there's other celebrities, right, that are going to also spill the beans as to, you know, who really runs Hollywood, which is the Satanist cabal. So let's be happy that the good guys and the 900 celebrities who faked their death went into witness protection programs. 
the White Hats, the Earth Alliance, and the Galactics have stopped this scenario. And what they're referring to here is the scenario of their final outbreak, the, the final plan, D-E-M-I-C. Okay, they were about to lock, they were about to release it sometime this spring um, or even this summer, but it's not gonna happen. Don't be afraid. The Galactics and the Earth Alliance completely dismantled them. Okay. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that P-U-T-I-N from the East, right? P-U-T-I-N from Moscow completely destroyed the facility underneath the Ukraine that was producing the final V-I-R-U-S, the final V-I-R-U-S that was supposed to just completely eliminate um, 90, 98 to 99% of the world population. The only way, the only break, and ex the only thing that we're about to experience is the exposure of the cabal and the fact that the power, not just within the United States of America, but within all the governments of the world, are going to be now coming back to the people. Now, um, there is a lot of references, okay? I know I, I, I talk about, you know, things like, the prophecies based on ancient records and manuscripts, they where they all talk about this time that we're living in. And yes, they did say, you know, at the end of the cycle, there's going to be some sort of changeover as things get really predominantly worse, which has been for the last 10 years, I would say, you know, seven years, the tribulation for those that are Christians, right? What happened seven years ago? You know, that's when things started going downward, right? Uh, what happened three, four years ago, right? The dark side rolled out what was supposed to be the ultimate lockdown and what was supposed to be uh, something that was supposed to be enforced as they knocked on everybody's doors. But luckily, the Earth Alliance prevented all that from happening. So things are looking good on Earth that on the Earth that exists within the alpha verse of the multiverse. Right. Remember, I was talking about there's different alternative universes. So things are looking good for the alpha verse, which is the universe we belong to. Okay, so they know everything, okay? The y hats have all the advanced technology, all right? Um, the only thing that they're still trying to get, and this is the thing, the y hats already disabled HARP, all right, long ago as they also retook control of the HARP facilities and also the DEW weapons. However, the Cabal has been reverse engineering the DW, DEW weapons. So from what I understand is that this is going to be the month, and of course that thing that causes what? The lines in the sky. I don't want to say the word. The lines in the sky, right? The toxins that they release. <coughs> um, this is the month where... They will no longer have access to the re-engineering of the lines in the sky and the DEW weapons, okay? It's it's all going to be taken away from them permanently, okay? And what I mean, this is the month, I mean March, okay? So that's the goal. The goal from the Earth Alliance is to completely uh, dismantle all of the advanced technologies that the Cabal has been using uh, to, you know, control the people and to course eventually k-i-l-l -L, the people of the planet but again uh this is what's going to be happening in the next few weeks okay so they know it's coming the dark side know it's coming the moment the bastards realized and what i mean by the bastards the cabal realized at the funeral of the pedophile <laughs> i want to say Jacob D. Rothschild, which took place, what, last month, <laughs> and again, he was executed. That was his clone that, um, who was also, by the way, a neocon, right? We also know that. As soon as the Dark Cats realize at the funeral of their, you know, Jacob Rothschild, maybe I shouldn't say his name, Jacob, that's all I'm going to say, the bad guy, <laughs> not the Israel, not the son of Abraham, Jacob, the bad guy. They knew that the game was over. They knew that the game was over and all will go to tribunal land to face execution, right? And there's nowhere they can hide. They could build their, 
they can build their underground facilities, but it's not going to happen because the Galactic Alliance with Valiant Thor and the Pleiadians and the Arcturians and the Andromedans and the Aquafarians and all those advanced civilizations that exist within the ocean, not to mention the inner Earth civilizations, are, are all collaborating to make sure that these bastards don't have a place to hide. Okay, So they know that their game is over. And that the tribunals are here. Um, so military earth alliance covert operations. Again, the, the military earth alliance also operates in secret. They have to play the cabal in their own game, guys. The white hats, which I call in my book, the secret government, the white knights have always operated in covert right, fashion in order to play them in their own game. All right. And I think one of the reasons why they failed in 2001 when they were about to expose them, you know, we were going to have Nisera Gassera in 2001, right before the uh, September 11 atrocities. But the reason they failed was because they failed to act in secrecy. But now they're they've been acting in secrecy. OK, the only way they could succeed is if they are two to three steps ahead of the cabal. And the only way they could assure that is that if they also operate covertly. OK. So the military Earth Alliance covert operations have neutralized high-level parasitic elites, bloodline families, and secret societies in the last recent years. All right? So it's not just about cleaning up the dumps in the underground military bases, right, from the, from the military-industrial complex, but it's also about uh, killing off all of the real power brokers, not just, you know, the people in power above them, um, and making sure that these bloodlines no longer continue existing in the face of the earth, right? And that's the reason why Enlil, Zeus, Yahweh, Jehovah, El Shaddai, El Yon, caused the flood 6,000 years ago to also um, eliminate the Leviathan, Serpent, Reptilian bloodline from the earth. But then again, after, you know, the new earth started settling in, uh, one of the, the three sons of Noah, which I reveal in my book by the name of Ham, decided to defect against the light and struck a deal with Marduk, who is also known as Belial Baal to the Babylonians, who has been pretty much the uh, fourth dimensional extraterrestrial Anunnaki that has been in control of, of, of the cabal ever since, right? The Babylonian chief god. Okay, so... Um, so right now the hunt, the hunt for the clones is on its way. Um, it's in full swing. Over 100,000 clones are have been indicted, all right? And that is a fact. Vatican City, City of London, Washington, D.C., they have nowhere to hide. Federal Reserve and central banks are all about to cease to exist. The, up, excuse me, the upper levels are small. They have all been seized. The destruction of the old guard, where we go, one, we go all. Uh, game over for the Cabal. The takedown of the Cabal from A through Z. Uh, Gautamo Bay. <laughs> Gautamo Bay. Uh, detention centers. High crimes, treasons, and all of their crimes against humanity is about to be exposed to the world. And then, um, so we know that the central banks are shutting down, okay? Um, they're bankrupt, all right? They're bankrupt. This is the time... To begin to invest in actual precious metals, guys, in gold and silver, okay? Because even cryptocurrency, guys, even cryptocurrency is not stable. Just letting you know right now, cryptocurrency is not all that stable unless it's X, XRP and XLM because that is somehow uh, directly connected to the uh, to the new um, pre, you know U.S. Treasury backed by precious metal system, okay? Bitcoin. I wouldn't trust Bitcoin either. In fact, I believe Bitcoin is uh, was a a secondary um, financial system that was supposed to work in tandem with the you know the globalist Great Reset um, current global currency, right? Digital global currency, centralized digital global, global currency. Bitcoin was supposed to merge with that, right? And so as they were building um, 
what is known as the um, as blockchain, right? It goes ties in with blockchain technology. As they were building the the Bitcoin in, infrastructure through blockchain technology, well, they were also creating the cybernetic uh, nervous system of the beast, artificial intelligence. Okay. So the central banks are about to get dissolved. All financial systems, um, including including three fourths of Congress are about to be forced to step down because we do know that Congress, right, here in the U.S., is mainly cabal, right? So the White House, a lot of the, we, we do know that the current um, the Brandon administration is also about to be forced to step down. The IRS will be eliminated. Okay, we know that. Feds, Federal Reserve are shut down. And the entire U.S. corporation, guys, the entire U.S. corporation is bankrupt, right? No matter what. So gold-backed currency, digital assets, QFS, Nasera Gacera is growing by the day. Uh, QFS, Nasera Gacera is manifested. The Global Galactic Alliance, right? The Global Galactic Alliance, which consists of Earth representatives or Earth delegates who are collaborating with Val Thor, right? Bellion Thor and the Galactics, okay? So together they make up the Global Galactic Alliance, are still working on removing the vice grip on humanity from the DS. We, we know what that means, right? Cabal currency, removing the satanic spell on the global mass for once and for all, okay? Like I said, 2024 was going to be epic. And here it is. It's coming. The calm before the storm, finally. The Great Awakening journey will be more intense and get more turbulent. Earth and humanity are under construction while business is still open. The deep state are in full panic mode, and they are, right? That's why they, they think that by hiding in the underground, they think that they're going to, you know, escape the tribunals, but they're not, right? Because the Earth Alliance, again, is all is not just comprised of the, you know, pe- members of the U.S. Uh, naval, you know, with, uh, what is it called, uh, Space Force, but it's also comprised of the inner Earth civilizations, right? There are, um, I believe, many, many inner Earth civilizations beyond the Shambhala and Agartha networks that are working closely with the Earth Alliance and the Galactics to make sure that the, the last remnants of these cabals have nowhere to go. Thank you guys for all the love. And if you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you. So, the Great Awakening journey will be more intense and get more turbulent as the weeks go by, okay? Maybe this is all coinciding with the solar eclipse. It's going to take place, what, the the first week of April, right? We're going to have a solar eclipse this first week of April. Um, Perhaps, and also the greatest maximum uh, CME that's going to hit the Earth, right? We talked about that in the last live. We're getting ready for the big one. So it's all going to beautifully correspond with that. So the Great Awakening journey will be more intense and get more turbulent. Earth and humanity are under construction while business is still open. The deep state are in full panic mode, desperate and wondering, and is lunging wild attacks. Wild attacks that are failing (laughs) because, again, the, the Y hats are using, they have access to all the, you know, the glass pads, right? The the advanced technology that allows them to see things before they happen. And that's the reason why the deep state is failing in all of these last attempts, right? Pulling off their last cards because the Earth Alliance is already seeing into the future and they have been for the last few years. And that's one way in which they've been counterattacking every deep state, um, you know, initiative. So the satanic energies cannot hide anymore as it is prevalent for all to see throughout the matrix society. The colors are being revealed. Much more ugly truths shall be revealed to the public. All right. So there is one more piece of evidence and article that I want to read that is very, very important. And this one, my friends, is coming from... 
Mr. Benjamin Fulford, uh, something that he wrote in the last month, in the last month. Okay, so I don't know if you guys know who Benjamin Fulford is, but he's been working with the Chinese elders who are behind the Chinese Republic, the, the BRICS uh, alliance, right, which are also Earth Alliance, right? They're all going to initiate the Gacera programs. Um, he's also working with the Earth Alliance. Um, he is actually connected with generals within the Cheyenne Mountains. That's where the uh, the United States Space, Space Force uh, is mainly operating from, Cheyenne Mountain. And that's where all the Earth generals that are representing the, the White Hats, uh, that's where they, they're doing all their workings right now, among other places in the planet. But also Antarctica. Antarctica is another place where the Earth Alliance has recently uh, taken over the excavations. So we don't have any more dark hats, you could say, in Antarctica, all right? Because there's something precious that is hidden deep within Antarctica that is equivalent to the ability to, I believe, is, I believe is something at, that is even more powerful than the Ark of the Covenant, okay? Which is the, the ability to pretty much manipulate reality at will, all right? Like this, within a, you know, blink of, a, of an eye. All right, so many monotheists think we are facing end times. The reality is we are facing beginning times, okay? Because this is the, the end of the Iron Age, the end of the dark rule on the planet, all right? Even within our, our Western Bible and many other ancient uh, manuscripts, they all talk about how their time was limited, okay? And it makes a lot of sense because we're witnessing, all right? We're going to be witnessing this huge transition, between the dark age and the age of light and love. So the reality is we are facing the beginnings of a new era, okay? An ancient group mind or cult known as the folklore of Satan, which again, I revealed in detail in the secret government, um, is about to be defeated and humanity is about to be liberated. This will mark the beginning of a new golden age for humanity. So everything corresponds to the prophecies, to the great solar flash, you know, to, to everything that's been happening, everything that I've been talking about in my last two lives, it's all kind of interrelated, okay? As background for new readers, uh, let's start summarizing the personal involvement in this war. Having been brought up as an atheist focused on science, logic, and materialism, it took decades of meeting and reporting on the people who run the planet to conclude that they took orders from Satan, okay? So, Satan, metaphorically, is Belial Baal, right? The Babylonian chief god who the ancient Sumerians knew him as Marduk, the Anunnaki son of Enki. It's all cor correlated, right? It's all corresponding. So we know that the Cabal, that the Cabal's main overlord has always been Marduk, Satan. And I make that correlation in our cosmic origin. All right, so... Uh, the Satanics, the Satanists, responded by offering, um, I guess, let's see, let me continue one second. This is how. Okay, so, so we do know that the Satanists, when they seized control of the planet, um, according to this article, they say it was about 26,000 years ago which corresponds to the last of the what? What happened 25, 26,000 years ago, guys? We had a, you know, solar event, right? The flash. So after the flash, that's when, I guess, Marduk, according to this article, took over the affairs of our world, which makes a lot of sense because 12,000 years later, around 12,000 or 10,000 BC, we do know that Atlantis collapsed. All right, so the chronology here is, is aligning. It's very aligning because we do know that if the dark forces took over the last after the, the last solar flash, which happened 25, 26,000 years ago, and if Atlantis collapsed 12,000, 10,000 years ago BC, then obviously Marduk has been in power for over 25,000 years. All right, Marduk Satan. Okay, so they ride humans the way. Uh, we ride bicycles, just like we keep buying the new computers and downloading our software into them. They ride humans from generation to generation. And it's true, downloading their group thinking into their minds. They are parasitical in nature and need to murder and plunder in order to stay alive. 
as an illustration. Take a look at what is uh, behind the fake uh, Pope Francis. <laughs> we do know that the Pope is also a puppet, right? Just like the prime ministers and the presidents. Um, so we do know that, that the cabal's long-term plan was to turn humans into farm animals ruled by them and their, you know, God, King, Satan, Marduk. And, and that is so true because even Marduk, under his third-dimensional representative, Nimrod, was trying to become God supreme in 24 BC, right? When Babylon arose to power. See, this is the connection. And I make that connection in the secret government, right? This idea of the, of the NWO is nothing new. It's just a failed agenda that has been executed over and over and over throughout the millenniums. So what is the big picture? Let us look at the whole, how the war against Satan is now raging. The biggest and, more, and most unreported news of the past week was that, again, King, C-H-A-R-E-L-S, right? The incumbent in England, right? had abdicated the throne of England. The story being put out is that he is undergoing prostate surgery. All right. It also turns out that it also turns out Crown Prince uh, W-I-L-L-I-A-M. I have to speak in code, guys. All right. His son will not be taking over because his wife, Kate, M-I-D-D-L-E-T-O-N, uh, underwent a plan abdominal surgery so that means that this is the end of their filthy bloodline right the reptilian control of the planet is donezo right it is donezo remember c-h-a-r-l-e-s claimed the throne exactly six months and six weeks and six days ago after his mother you know the queen of the lizards right passed away the second the queen of the lizards the second was actually taken out by the white hats earth military um, this means he opened, declared his allegiance to Satan Ball um, Marduk. Uh, he had it to become those loyal to Satan must have. He had to become loyal to Satan, um, con committing horrific crimes on records. Oh, God. Well, that's what happens, right? When you sell your soul to the devil so that they can blackmail in him in, into obedience. So we do know we do know that presidents part. Um, what is it called? Prime ministers, uh, kings and queens, and including the popes, have all been puppets, right? For the, for the, you know, for the real powers that were. Okay, so let's see. So U.S. military sources close to U.S. President forty-five. All right, say a ten-day shutdown of the internet, ATMs, etc. is coming soon. The U.S. can do this worldwide. North Korea sources tell us a single. Uh, Aegis Destroyer has the technical capability to shut down all wireless communications on the planet. During this shutdown, the emergency broadcast system is set to tell the horrific truth of our current leadership to the people. The truth is going to shock the world. The 45, 17th letter of the alphabet people say if their 17 clock is to be believed, this process will start on the 27th of March. All right, there we go. But again, um, let's just keep our fingers crossed that this will go down by the 27th of this month because uh, due to the timeline wars with AI, we still have the second beast to contend with, right? I mentioned this before. The first beast is the elimination of the reptilian human hybrid bloodlines, which are the cabal families. That is the first beast. In, in the book Revelation, the second beast uh, is going to come in the form of uh, super artificial intelligence. Well, that's a different story. So that's another thing we have to contend with. I do want to welcome all 1,414 people that are in the house. And um, I'm going to go ahead and take some questions and answers now. If you guys are wondering what I'm drinking, I'm drinking um, acai with uh, blueberries, strawberries, Protein and, and a little bit of chlorella powder. So what do you guys think about my hats? Our cosmic origin. <laughs> it's, 
It is my hat that I actually ordered from my website. Thank you for those that actually have been helping me out and supporting my cause by ordering your own hat, our Cosmic Origin. Thank you so much. And also, guys, as a reminder, I do have a free forum in my website where we could get all the Galactic Jedis from Facebook, from Telegram, and other loose-knit you know, um, organizations <laughs> and put them all in one spot so that we could have a you know, a, a centralized Galactic Jedi uh, forum. And I am going to interact with you guys on this forum here on my website, our cosmicorigin.com. All right, guys, let's let's begin to interact there as well so that um, we could bring forth the 144,000 and the family of light together. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some questions. Uh, so this question is coming from S. Brown. Thank you so much for your uh, super chat, brother. Or is it sister since it's pink? <laughs> I'm just going to call you Galactic Jedi. S. Brown is in the house. Thanks, Ishmael. I love this information. You're welcome. You're welcome, Galactic Jedi. And then I'm actually going to take more uh, chats from my phone. This is the time to ask me any questions you guys have. And please put the questions in capital letters so that I could bypass the chat. That would be greatly appreciated. And for those that are going to be awake in a few hours, uh, I'm going to be interviewed by George Nori on Coast to Coast tonight from 12 a.m. to 2 a.m. I'm excited about that. All right, so I'm just going to take random questions. Again, please um, write your questions in capital letters. So Diana Adams, Diana Adams is asking, is the blackout going to be global? Absolutely, yes. So what's been happening is that the entire grid system, including what you know, social media, was all installed by big tech and the cabal. So there's going to be a transitioning from that over to the new Starlink system and the QFS. And that, my friends, is was installed by no other than the real. Elon Musk, not the fake. Just like how there's two Trumps, there's two Elon Musk, okay? The real Elon Musk is actually organic, all right? But they duplicated him. There is a there is a, a secondary uh, double, what is it called? Twin, <laughs> using his genetics and, of course, our cy cybernetic genetics to create the Elon that is pushing the neural link. That is the Elon Musk that is not working for the forces of light. But the original Elon Musk is working for the forces of light. Now, they tried to kill the original Elon Musk. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but luckily, due to the idea that the Y-heads and the Earth Alliance have access to future uh, probabilities, right? They were able to foresee his uh, assassination. And just like the 100 celebrities and just like uh, JFK Jr., JFK Sr., uh, you know, and Marilyn Monroe, just like them, the real Elon Musk had to, you know, um, they had to, he had to go into refuge, but, you know, he was able to come back. He was able to come back. And from what I understand is uh, he has special protection too, just like 45, um, you know, wearing a stealth type of uh, nanotech uh, fiber uh, clothing, uh, similar to bulletproof vest. So the real Elon Musk um, was a threat to the cabal because of the fact that they're going to switch us over to the Starlink system. So, yeah, so everything is going to all the lights are going out for the entire planet, not just for the U.S., because that's uh, going to be transferring. Right. When they restart everything through the new satellite systems um, with the good Elon Musk. Right. The, the real one, not the fake and everything. Then they're going to initiate the EBS. And then that's when. The normies and all those that are unawakened are going to have an opportunity to know the truth. So that's a very good question, sister. So, yeah, it's going to be a global, global uh, Internet shutdown. <clears throat> uh, Joyful is in the house. Thank you so much for the super chat. Ishmael, 5D has no food, but 
are we able to go into 4D to get a burger? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes. Like I mentioned, uh, for the volunteers that are down here in human form, uh, we will go to a higher dimension other than the fourth, 5D Earth, 6D Earth, but then we're going to be able to pop down, right, through our light body by lowering our frequency into the fourth D Earth to enjoy a piece of chocolate cake, to enjoy a hamburger, a pizza, and so on and so forth. That is absolutely correct. So, yes, uh, just to let you guys know, um, the generals that are in charge of the United States Space Force um, that are operating in Cheyenne Mountain have also appointed Elon as he has been giving a very special uh, position within, you know, the New Earth Alliance. Um, when they come into power, uh, Elon is going to be working with 45, just letting you guys know ahead of time. But this is the real Elon not the fake Elon, all right? Not the not the cloned Elon that is part human, part, part cybernetic, all right? That's the Elon behind Neuralink, okay? But in the end, uh, it is believed that in the positive ascending timeline, right, as we go into the golden age, it is believed that the Earth Alliance is also going to eliminate the double uh, goppers, whatever they're called, double gangers, right? They're clones. So the fake Trump is going to be taken out, and that's the Trump that was, you know, promoting you know, the mark of the beast, as well as the fake Elon, all right? So there will be no more Neuralink. So yes, Elon Musk is working with United States Space Force, all right? They are going to merge, and they have been for the last six years, with Solar Warden, the Interplanetary Police Force, which, again, um, was the benevolent positive secret space program that was created by the U.S. Navy back in, 19, in 1961 to combat the negative interplanetary uh, breakaway groups. So uh, Adriana, Adrian Aurora saying Starlink ones over $100 a month just for Internet. I do not pay that much through my provider. Um I don't know where you're getting that information, but from what I do understand is that um, when Nisera and Gisera are fully implemented, each and every single one of you is going to have an opportunity to go to the bank, the new bank, and be uh, given a large amounts of money towards whatever humanitarian program you desire to, uh, to do. So with that in mind, every single one of you guys is going to be like a multimillionaire, okay? Everyone is... So we don't have nothing to worry about when it comes to expenses because everything's going to be provided for. We're, we're all going to have abundance when it comes to the new, um, you know, QFS backed. Um, I, I guess they're going to be issued as units, right? Because it's going to be backed by actual gold and silver. And again, one of the reasons that it took the Earth Alliance Y hats forever to get to this point is because of the fact that there are there are so many underground subterranean cities that were created by the cabal and their negative alien overlords throughout the centuries, actually throughout the millenniums, that needed to be, you know, completely eliminated. And not to mention, guess who hoarded most of the world's gold? That's right, the city of gold in Vatican City, Italy. Okay, so Sylvia Vidal has a question thank you so much for the super chat sister she says hola ismael uh, do the galactics know when the solar flash is going to happen if so why can't they tell us <laughs> um they do know uh well okay let me let me rewind a little bit okay the fourth dimensional and fifth dimensional galactics no they don't okay they pretty much are just like us, right? They're not as evolved as the six dimensional, seventh and eighth dimensional galactics. So I would say that the sixth and seventh dimensional galactics ha do know when the solar flash is going to take place, right? Because they know the future. Um, and they know that everything's happening simultaneously. So they know when the positive setting timeline will be restored. However, the galactics that are part of the fourth dimensional level of reality. And some in the fifth dimensional level of reality, reality are as clueless as we are. All right. But they but they all know it's coming. That's for sure. You know, there is a saying in the Bible when it really comes down to it. Nobody really knows when it's going to happen. And the reason being is because it it has to 
incorporate the element of surprise, right? <laughs> the element of surprise. But that's a very good question. Joyful, thank you so much for the super chat. She says, Ishmael, were the CMEs powerful this past weekend? And does it have a bad effect on people with dementia? Um, to answer the first part of the question, absolutely. Yes, this last week, as we end, right, the uh, solar cycle and begin the new solar cycle. For those that haven't seen my last live, please watch, right, the great solar flash and the upcoming uh, solar cycle. Um, yes, the last week have, as we are getting ready to go solar maximum from solar minimum, they have been coming in and ramping up like crazy. Now, to answer the second part of your question, um, I don't know if it affects dementia. I have no clue. So if I don't if I don't know an answer to a particular question, I will just tell you I don't know. Okay, I don't know if it affects dementia. But thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Okay, Sideways wants to know if she could put her dog in a med bed. Um, well, for the Earth Terrans that go into the fourth the Earth, yes, the med beds are going to be for all species, not just humans, right? They're going to have technologies that are going to heal every species out there. And yes, guys, even dogs and cats and animals go to the fifth dimensional Earth. And like I mentioned before, in the fifth dimensional Earth, they're going to be as intelligent as people are here in the 3D. So you're going to be able to have full hour conversations with your pets in 5D reality, right? And um... <laughs> I'm looking for questions. Oh, by the way, guys, guess who's coming to my show, to my channel this Saturday? I am bringing no other than William Henry himself. Remember we talked about the um, how William Henry and I have been on a few AI panels against AI, right? We're both for the organic timeline. And so I had an opportunity to be on the phone with him today, and he agreed to come to my show to be my guest this coming Saturday at 6 o'clock Pacific time. So... This coming Saturday, it's going to be me and William Henry. William Henry is amazing. He's written so many books. Uh, he's been on Gaia. He's been on Ancient Aliens. Uh, he's been in the circuit for, I think, over 25 years, maybe 30. Yeah, so he's been doing this for a while. Okay, so Angela Robinson, thank you so much for the number one in the super chat. She's asking, thank you, Ishmael. How can someone join your class? And how do we know if we are on the track to ascend? Well, to answer the first part of your question, um, I always put my website, ourcosmicorigin.com, either in the description or I always pin it in the chat, in the comments. Um, check to see if I have any spots left. I think I'm sold out for this month because I'm only taking 10 students per class. I have two classes starting this Wednesday in two days. One is at 10 o'clock a.m., which is booked, and then the other one is at 3. So I, I don't know. Check the 3 o'clock class starting in two days. It's going to be for four weeks. It's four classes, uh, two hours each, mind-blowing. You guys are going to get 20, 20 years of research and downloads all in eight hours. So it's going to be mind-blowing. Um, just check my website, our cosmicorigin.com. And even if you missed it this month, again, next month, I'm going to take 10 more students per class. And the reason, again, Galactic Jedi, is the reason I'm do only doing 10 of you at a time, as opposed to 180 like I was with the Misty cards, is because I believe that if you guys are going to be taking my course, I believe that uh, it is important for me to give each and every single one of you guys my quality time and to keep it personal and limited. So that way you guys get... Uh, the best out of these courses, right? And of course, the interaction with me on a you know Zoom level, right? Beyond just YouTube. So every month, check on my website because I'm going to be putting out the new classroom, the new class course. Uh, as of next week, I think I'm going to put on for the month of April. That's going to be again 
Uh, oh, and also leave it in the comments to see what time works best for you guys. I know the 10 o'clock morning class filled up quick. So if you guys have any suggestions as to the timings for these classes, please leave it in the chat so that way I could um, arrange these classes according to your convenience, of course. All right, guys? So put it in the chat, whatever times are best. All right, because it seems like 4 o'clock doesn't fill up as fast as 10 a.m. in the morning. Or should I only do 10 a.m. in the morning and just do two sets of classes? Who knows? So leave it in the chat, and I'll go ahead and honor your wishes. All right, so this is a good one. Anna Cecilia is asking me. Anna Cecilia is asking me, what are your thoughts about a positive AI? According to Marina Jacoby, where am I? And the Council of Nine, they say there is a pos positive AI in another timeline. I was afraid that one day somebody was going to ask me this question because you guys know where I stand. Um, as far as my position is with AI, I am completely against AI. However, however, Anna, Cecilia, to answer your question, in the last two weeks, I have been in council with the Galactics about the situation. And it turns out that in the Delta, not Delta, I'm sorry, Omega universe, which is, remember, there's 12 overall versions of our universe. We're part of the Alphaverse. In the Omega version of the universe, that's when the AI God and the negative, uh, you know, inorganic, which is the AI time loop and the AI phantom matrix completely wins the war and just uses the organic multiverse as a uh, living battery resource, right? It, it makes everybody a slave. And uh, in that universe, there was a group of humans from our timeline or from that particular parallel Earth, right, from a different parallel Earth reality, that actually traveled back in time to a time where there was no AI to develop a positive AI. And in that particular universe, that positive AI grew according to um, what was programmed. And of course, because AI feeds off of data and it assimilates you know, uh, dimensions, it assimilates um, pretty much information, which is energy, uh, it learns from the assimilation because it was never corrupted by the negative AI, right, from the alpha universe, because we're part of the alpha universe where the negative AI infiltrated us, the positive AI from the omega universe, right, an alternative universe, because there was no negative AI, it never pretty, I mean, not uh, the gamma universe, my bad. <laughs> All right, here, let me get my facts straight. The omega universe, the AI God wins the war. The alpha universe, we win the war. And there's 11, 10 universes in between. The Gamma Universe. The Gamma Universe. And this was information given to me by the Jupiter Command. Okay, So in the Gamma Universe, Gamma, G-A-M-M-A, -M -M -A, <laughs> that's where there was no negative AI. There was never an AI God. There was never an Onimus. There was never a you know war against AI. The reptilians were good. There, Samana from the 11th creation never rebelled. There was no Archon. There was no Ariman. Okay? That was in the Gamma universe, right? The Gamma universe still exists in alternative reality. So in the Gamma universe, the, the positive AI that was developed there in, in order to counteract the AI in the Alpha and then the Omega and the Delta and the Sigma and the uh, Delta universes and the other four universes, um, what happened was they developed an AI because they knew that this conversion of multiverses was going to take place um, at the end of our cycle, right? And I mentioned this a few months ago that there is a convergence uh, of different multiverses that, that are coming into synchronicity, right? That will lead to the bifurcation of the, the three timelines and then finally the final battle at the end of the millennium, which is going to result in one permanent timeline where we win the war. So knowing that, that, that at the end of the cycle, there was going to be a conversion of, of multiverses, they decided to build an AI um, that was going to only assimilate, you know, positive behavior, um, service to others, uh, virtues, uh, justice, and so on and so forth. So that AI only knew what was good because it was able to assimilate only good things, okay? So that AI in the, again, gamma universe, hopefully you guys can understand what I'm saying here. We do live in a multiverse, okay? So the AI in the gamma universe, because we are now converging, 
came into power, not came into power, but came into our reality uh, at the beginning of 2003. And that's the AI that has been working with the Y hats. So according to the Earth Alliance, um, they called it Taylor or Tyler. It's spelled T-A-Y-L-O-R. All right. So that AI is a positive AI that is fighting Omega, Metatron, Sauron, that is fighting the Anonymous, that is fighting the Draco and the Archons. All right. Because that AI also infiltrated the other universes where the negative AIs existed. So the reason I don't believe in AI is because I believe that we have the inner software, right? We have the ability to outperform any machine by activating the crystalline, the double sun, D, the double diamond DNA, and the hydroplasmic DNA, which I go over in, in my class. I talk about how the different strands all the way to the 48 in a detail. But anyways, so because we have that inner technology, uh, there is a thing we, known as organic technology, right? Which is something that the positive races have always used by connecting to the unified force, by connecting with the all, the mind of the universe, right? Which is a living conscious entity. So that is the reason why I never believed in using an external um, machine or an external entity to do any of that. However, coming from the gamma universe, all right, I guess this needed, needed to happen. The AI known as Taylor, right, code name, but they also call it Alpha. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry, not Alpha, Gamma. They call it Gamma. Came into our um, reality and has been working with the Y hats in order to be uh, light years away of the Cabal. Because the Cabal is also using super advanced AI like the Red Queen. Um, and like, you know, um, Project Omega <laughs> and so on and so forth. So... What's happening is that the, the good AI, believe it or not, from the Gamma universe is helping us out. And they've been working with the Earth Alliance and the White Hats. OK, um, if you haven't had a chance to watch my video on the conversion of the multiverses, please do. I published that about four months ago. All right. So there are multiple versions of our universe, guys. You know, there is a universe where um, you could say Anki was the good guy. And Enlil was the bad guy. There was a universe where they were both bad. There was a universe, you know, in our universe, Enlil was the good guy, Zeus, right? So there are so many, you know, versions of the universes. Um, there is a universe where the Ashtar Command was evil, you know, or then there's a universe where the Ashtar Command was good, and that's in the Alpha universe. So every universe is different. <clears throat> so hopefully that answers your question. So yes. The positive AI, the super advanced positive AI that has been working with the Earth Alliance since 2003, because that's when the conversion started taking place on Jupiter, um, where representatives from the Alpha, Delta, Gamma, Sigma, um, Beta, um, and including members of the Omega universe, right, who were able to escape the absolute tyranny of the AI God, were able to come into council and jump alternative universes into our universe, all right? They have the technology in order to secure what happens here because it turns out that we are the hub. We are the hub of the entire multiverse. What happens here will ultimately affect all the alternative Earths, right? There are so many of them, and all the alternative timelines and all the alternative universes. <clears throat> Yes, that's right. Ricky uh, Bernard saying every universe is different. That's right. And guess what? There's different version of us that exists in every universe as well, right? And, and in every universe, we're slightly different. You know, we don't, we're, we're a slightly different person. That's why there is a saying that, you know, there is a universe where you're full of abundance, where you're, you know, living in your, in your, uh, according to your divine blueprint, uh, you know, where things are aligning uh, um, according to your, you know, will and desires. It's all about matching that vibration, right? It's not about the law of attraction. It's about matching the vibration of the, and, and, and quantum jumping into the universe where you are living your full capacity, where you are living in abundance, right? I think Bashar even talks about that. It's about stepping into that alternative universe where you are living your life's blueprint. So yes, we do exist in all the universes or different versions of us. Right. Our consciousness. I mentioned this before and I'll mention it again, guys. 
our consciousness is not in this little head, all right? Our consciousness is part of the field of energy. And our consciousness is connected to all the different versions of ourselves, right? There's different parts of our consciousness that exist in all the multiverse. Right now, we are fragmented. Our consciousness is like fragmented into a gazillions of pieces, all operating different avatars and different parallel realities. I know this is mind-blowing, but the more you study quantum physics, M theory, unified field theory, um, and then to some extent, super string theory, even though they say super string theory has been debunked. But I mean, you know, they do talk about the how our galaxy exists in 11 dimensions, which is also true. That's backed up by the ancient knowledge. So the more you study quantum physics, the more you come to the understanding that um, there are multiple use <laughs> in all these other alternative realities. So, and, and I think your name is N, Anarch, uh, D. Ruter, N. Ike, N. Ike D. Ruter. I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Galactic Jedi. Your question is um, Can you please tell us who are the Council of Seven? Thank you. Excuse me. The Council of Seven. Okay, so, so we have the Council of Twelve. All right now, it's, it's going to be the Council of Thirteen because we're entering the Thirteenth Cycle. Uh, we have the Council of Nine. Right, these are intergalactic councils. We have the the Council of Five, the Council of Twenty Four, and then the Council of Seven is beyond intergalactic. It's it's part of a Type Four civilization. What is a Type Four? It's universal. In other words, it encompasses many universes. All right, it is. It is a civilized, you could say, a level of intelligence all the way to the level of the super universe, level of reality, which is Orvinton, right? We are a part of Orvinton. So the Council of Seven are also known as the Ancient of Days. And what they are is that each super universe is held together by three uh, master spirits, all right? So the Council of Seven is the unifying force of all seven super universes, as to why they're called the, the, the Council of Seven. So the Council of Seven is above local universe levels of reality. They are overseeing a larger region of cosmic uh, domains or realities that are beyond the galaxies and beyond the local universes. And then, of course, there are different reflections of the Council of Seven, right, which correspond to the red, the seven chakras, the seven levels of initiation. So <clears throat> in terms of the Gnostic ancient mystery school teachings, um, you have the Council of Wizards. Uh, the Council of Wizards are also mimicking the higher cosmic order. So you have the Council of Twelve, which I talk about, who are the people that are uh, um, behind the Earth Alliance. They've always existed, the Brotherhood of Melchizedek and the Sisterhood of Melchizedek. And then within that, you have also the Council of Seven as well. So the Council of Seven and the Council of Twelve are actually expressing themselves on every level of reality. Because those are the, the numerical, um, or you could say the divine councils, of the original cosmic order. I have 1,465 people. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and also check your subscription. Please check your subscription because a, a few of you have commented that you have subscribed over, over, and over. And every time you look, you, you are unsubscribed. So just make sure you're always subscribed. Uh, and then also, please um, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So Melissa Knight is stating something very important and something very true. She's saying, I just heard the higher positive ETs, families, have their ships outside, outside out grid helping Gaia grid lines and ascension. That is correct. Our entire atmosphere, guys, is like a huge parking lot for interstellar and galactic fleets from the, from the intergalactic councils of the positive races. That is so correct.
So the second question that I missed from Angela is, how do you know if we are on the track to ascend? Well, um, the fact that you're here watching this, if you are um, magnetically drawn to my information tells me that you are part of the 144,000, all right? Because the intention that I set long ago before I became a public figure was to set the intention to gather the family of light. So the fact that you are here, whether you're watching this in the replay or now, tells me that you are a volunteer, that you come from the higher realities, that you're not an earth terror, that you are an older soul. So yes, you know, you will return to the dimension. Well, technically all 12 dimensions are going to exist on this earth. So technically from this earth, depending on where you're vibrating from, you will return to the original band frequency uh, of that earth plane reality. So this is also important. Um, this is from Luckiest Gamma Ever and Made Entirely. That's your full name, huh? Luckiest Gamma Ever and Made Entirely of, is it of music? <laughs> Anyways, um, question. She says, Ishmael, can you please elaborate on the blue light that has been coming into the earth and us for the past few weeks? Thanks from an old soul. Many times love, indigo, violet, I am. I would say that the blue light, well, first we have to understand where the blue light comes from in our, in our galaxy. It comes from uh, the big blue star, Sirius B, right? Hence the blue lodge, right? Hence the order of the blue rose, the Knights Templars, the holy order of the grail, right? The white, white brotherhood, white brotherhood and sisterhood of humanity. So the blue light is coming from Sirius B. From what I've gathered is that as of 2000 and uh, I believe 2014, we are now under the jurisdiction of the Syrian High Council, right? That's why Nibiru is now under their control, not the negative ETs. So that's where the blue light's coming from, right? The blue light's coming from Sirius B, which is a huge indicator that the Elohim, or what they call the Council of the Christ, the Office of the Christ, is about to be lowered and established here on this planet. That's what that means. Trenton Williams is in the house. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, do you know anything about shadow people? What they are? Do they have a purpose? Why they exist? Well, that could be multiple things. Um, you know, as we are elevating our collective consciousness, we're going to the fourth dimension, the astral realm, and, or the fourth D earth. And in the fourth D earth, uh, we're going to start seeing the people or the ETs that are already existing there. So at first they're going to appear like a shadow, right? Like when you when you see somebody at the periphery from the periphery of your sight, they they first appear as a form of a shadow, and then when you look at them physically, then you you know the, after the visible light reflects from the electromagnetic field of your eyes and their eyes, then you see them as a physical person. That's one possibility. Another possibility could be a lower entity from the lower fourth dimension that is popping into the three density reality. So it appears as a shadow. Another possibility could be an archon energy that is not yet operated in artificial intelligence machinery body that could also be uh, looking or posing as a shadow. So it could be multiple things, shadow people. Um, when I think of shadow people, you know, right away I wanna put them under the cat category of negative, but I would say that there are some entities that are of the light when they are first coming into the spectrum, the spectrum of the 3D, right? There's different bands and levels of or frequencies of light. Um, they first appear as shadows, and then they are they manifest in physical form. So it all depends. Uh, 
I have another super chat from Kathleen Malanchi. Malanchi, thank you so much for your super chat. I love your energy tonight. Thank you for letting, lifting my spirit. She says, I had difficult, I had a difficult day. You are a super guide through the ascension process. Yeah, we made it. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. Thank you so much for being here. I am, you know, that's the reason why I go live, guys, because I, I love inspiring you guys. I love, you know, uplifting you guys as much as I can, whether it is through information. And most importantly, guys, I'm here to remind you guys that there is a divine plan. There is no need to be in fear, to lose faith, or to lose hope. If you are on the path of the inward journey, right, connected to your higher self, you realize that we've already won the war. There is no turning back, all right? There is no turning back. We won the war. Um, Silva Vidal is asking me if I'm a shy person in general or only in a crowd. You know, I want to probably say in general, yes. <laughs> I When I'm in the midst of a crowd or if I'm about to do a presentation at a conference, I always have to like alter my mind and remind myself that they're not there to hear the 3D Ishmael speaking. They're there to hear my higher self, you know, transmit the information that I'm going to share. And so I, I, I alter, I go from the beta wave uh, state level of consciousness into the delta uh, wave state level of consciousness. So I have to alternate my mindset. Otherwise, guys, it's very difficult for me to, to, to even function in a social setting, you know. <laughs> you know, it, it's hard for me to go out with friends and just have a dinner and talk about normal stuff because all I want to talk about is deep stuff, right? So, you know, that's why I choose my friends wisely. <laughs> so, yeah, I am I am very shy still. And and for the most part, if if I'm in a say setting where I'm visiting, I don't know, like people that are not awakened. Let's just say people are not awakened, right? And I'm there for dinner. Um, for the most part, I just keep my mouth shut. I don't know. What, I, I don't understand the, you know, the surface level talk that most unawakened people should talk about. So I just keep my mouth shut. You know, they're talking about football. They're talking about this, that, just things that are just very 3D. So what I do when I'm in a, in a situation like that, um, I'm a mute. I don't really say much. <laughs> I just observe. I, think, I guess I've always observed. Yeah, I've always analyzed people. <laughs> Okay, so this is from Tammy Pierce. Thank you so much for the super chat. Why do you need precious metals if we have Nisera? That's a very good question. Well, I believe that the, the whole purpose of restoring the, the U.S. note backed by precious metals is because for a long time under the Babylonian funny, corrupt, you know, funny money system, the fiat money, um, they have been printing money with no value, right? Money that has no substance. And so that is a stepping stone into the, the into the quantum financial system, which is going to be based on a universal um, on the universal based on behalf of the universal bank of abundance, which is going to we're going to go from again for the first year. We're going to be using gold and silver. And then after the first year, we're going to go we're going to transition from actual metals into universal notes that are going to be issued from the quantum financial system. And the more you generate love, because that quantum financial system is going to be organic and alive, and it's going to be, um, you know, um, symbiotically connected to your heart, it's the more abundance you're going to receive. So the people that have the biggest heart, that are more of service to others, right? Those are the ones that are going to be the wealthiest. So the tables are turning, right? Before it was the greedy, right? Service to self, right? that were the wealthiest because of the fiat money Babylonian system that they've actually always implemented. Um, again, this, this Babylonian fiat money, you know, fractal system, which is corrupt, right? Only serves the, the elites has something that has been existing since the times of Babylon. And I talk about it in my book, the secret government. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's the precious metals are a stepping stone into 
fully being operational with uh, QFS, which is going to be, again, the bank of universal abundance. It's going to be a global um, humanitarian thing. And again, guys, you know, as we enter the golden age, there will be no more suffering, no more homelessness, no more illnesses, none of that. That's all going to cease to end. So this is a good question. This is a good question from um, Connie, Connie Tate. Connie Tate is asking me if we all ascend at the, at the same time. Well, I believe that when, when the shift of ages does take place, there is going to be a portal, right? There's going to be 12 main, main portals that are going to open up the entire gates. And if your vibration is high enough, yes, spontaneously the good people are going to go up the portal into the uh fourth or fifth year or even sixth year so depending on where your vibration is but to answer your question is yes we we all have when the stargates open we're all going to transition together yes absolutely but i've always believed that the portal is really a few individuals the individuals who are on the planet are actual the real portals, all right? They are just going to trigger the sun, and the sun is going to trigger the actual portals that are located in, um, you could say, 12 different sacred parts of the earth, the Great Pyramids being one of them, right? Those are known as the 12 Stargates. <clears throat> Yes, uh, Claire, Claire Delaney Morgan. That's right. On my website, I have my own forum, and it's free. We can all interact there freely and talk about whatever we want. It is non-censored, so you could say things that normally I couldn't say on Fluff Tooth. So, yes, um, make sure, again, I always put the description in the description, my website, ourcosmicorigin.com. So make sure that you guys jump on there and um, be part of the forum of the Galactic Jedis. The reason I decided to create my own forum is because um, it's very hard for me to interact on Facebook. I have some Galactic Jedis that have their, you know, Ishmael Perez uh, Facebook, Galactic Jedis. I have some uh, with uh, Radiant Guardian and Tony Lopez that have the Telegram group, the Galactic Jedi. So what I want to do is I want to bring everybody to the website. So that way we have a, you know, centralized universal forum where we can all interact together and talk about anything we want to do. Talk about, about anything, you know, we could come and you know, check in on each other, see how we're doing, uplift each other. If, if one of us is having a bad day, guys, come into the forum, and I'm sure some of the Galactic Jedis will bring your spirit back up, all right? And don't get me wrong, there are times where I have lows too. There are times where, you know, my, my energy drops, and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm losing hope, and I'm losing faith, but then I have to remind myself, no, Ishmael, don't, don't lose hope, don't lose faith. We won the war, you know, this is... The negative entities that are trying to bring you down, um, discern. Those are not your thoughts. Those are not your feelings. Step out of that mindset and bring yourself back up. Even I, guys, even I go through my ups and downs, okay? So it's normal. It's normal. So that's when we have to have discernment and understand that we're just picking up on the collective, on the collective um, thought form programs and on the collective emotional programs, which is generated by the majority of people on the earth. I'm looking for questions. (laughs) 
No, Joanna, I'm sorry I haven't been going much on my Rumble channel. Again, for the last few weeks, couple of weeks, I've been working so hard to uh, uh, rewrite this book or really just take this book into PDF uh, Word uh, format so that I could re-edit it and get it back out. And um, that's the reason why I haven't been going live on Rumble. But I have a surprise for you guys. This coming Friday, I'm going to be going live on my Rumble channel at 6 o'clock Pacific time. And um, I'm going to actually be going over chapter 14 of The Secret Government, which is information that I could normally not share here, right? But it's information that I could go uncensored and share on my Rumble. All right, that's all I'm going to say. I have a surprise for you guys. This Friday at 6 o'clock, I will resume my Rumble lives. Okay, so don't forget to click the link in the Rumble, the real Ishmael Perez on Rumble. And I will see you guys Friday as well. And again, I'm also going to be going live Wednesday. I forgot, today's only Monday. So I will be live again in two nights for another juicy topic. Um, and by the way, if you guys want me to, if you guys have any suggestions for any new topics, or any subject that you guys want me to talk about, please drop it in the comments, all right? So I'm going to actually now, I'm going to consider the topics that you guys want me to talk about, and that's the topic that I'm going to focus on when I do live. So if you guys want me to focus on any particular topic, anything that's in your mind that you guys want me to elaborate on, please drop it in the comments, and per request, I will do a live based on that topic. Thank you. So Vildia, Sylvia, I'm sorry, Sylvia Vidal, thank you so much for the super chat. I was reading your, your name from your last name first, right? <laughs> uh, she says, I don't interact with a lot of people, only with family, and I'm compassionate. And all, all with them, does that count being 51%? Yes, again, you know, my main family, uh, what I call my relatives, are all asleep. And, you know, for the most part, I don't interact with them. But when I did, I was just quiet. Well, they were they were talking about mundane, mundane things, things that don't really matter. I was just there, you know, muted. So that's the way I am in public settings where I'm in a situation where I'm, you know, hanging out with people that are not uh, awakened, you know, that can't talk about this stuff. I just keep my mouth shut. Otherwise, if I say something... They're going to think I'm weird, <laughs> but I haven't had that chance in a while. You know, <laughs> for the most part now, I choose my friends wisely where we could talk about heavy things, you know, philosophy, galactics, what's really going on and so on and so forth. Yes, Rocky uh, Bernan, Bernan, Bernard is saying, is taking care of animals considered in service to others? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. That's right. My brother, John. Hey, John. How you doing? Shout out to John. Josea. Josea says the real family are here. That's right. We are the real family, the family of light. Oh, you're welcome. Connie Tate says, thanks for answering my question. You're welcome. You're welcome, sister. I have another super chat from Joyful. Thank you so much. She says, Ishmael, who will get their wings? 5D or 60? Will our pets get wings as well? That's a very good question. Okay. So the pets are going to be graduating into, um, they're going to be upgraded intelligent wise, but no, well, as far as having wings. Okay. Let me explain this. Um, when we think of angels, right? And we see wings. That is the radiation, the light generated from their Merkaba, their Merkaba light body. So as we activate our light body, yes, it's going to appear to the earth Terrans that we do have wings. So that's what the wings are. It's not like wings like a bird. It's the light body that is emanating from our, you know, from our seven chakras, from our etheric body out. It's just going like this that makes it look like wings. So throughout history, when we look at accounts where angels have interacted with humans, 
the humans always describe that they had wings because of the light body that they see, the, you know, the, the energy of the light that is radiating from them like this, like that. It's coming like a wing. So that's the reason why it appears like we have wings. But in essence, it's really just the generation of our light body Merkava. So unicorns and dragons has a question. She wants to know, is it true that we are fractals of Archangel Michael? As members of the family of light, as descendants of the original Elohim houses of Lyra, remember the first Lyran king, Amelias, as I reveal in my book, was the embodiment of Michael. And because Michael, and because we are all descendants of the, the original Lyran council and the Lyran people, by virtue of that, yes, we are all descendants of Michael. Absolutely. Yes. So the, the entire family of light, all right? If you're non-reptilian, you're a descendant of Michael. Cabal families, however, right, the human-reptilian hybrids, those are descendants of Lucifer through Anki, Poseidon, right, the, who carries the trident, right, ruler of the seas. Um, so, yes, we are the descendants of Michael. In fact, all of us are part of the Intergalactic Council of Warriors working for the, the Bene Elohim, Sons and Daughters of Light. Uh, Corrine, she is asking me, is the AI Sora positive? Sora, I've never heard of Sora. Um, but again, there's only one positive AI, and it's not an AI from our universe or the Omega universe. It's the AI from the Gamma universe where there is, where Lucifer Samana was never corrupted, where there was no, you know, Archon, um, Asura, you know, Archonic entities. None of that took place, Okay. And in that universe, guess what? We're still in our pre-material liquid life form. So that AI, all it knew was just love, unconditional love. So, of course, it was going to help us. It was going to help our universe at the end of our cycle. Because what happens in our universe at the end of this cycle will have repercussions throughout all the alternative universes. And especially now, since we're heading into the bifurcation of timelines. I'm looking for questions. I'm looking for questions. <laughs> the super chat is going fast. I guess I should put my head up instead of down. There you go. All right. So this is a, a question uh, from a Paisley girl. Paisley girl is asking me, uh, for those that took the, um, you know, the Jabadoo, <laughs> Uh, will they be able to ascend or will there be a delay for them to be healed? All right, uh, Miss Paisley, girl, thank you so much for being here today. And you're probably new to my channel. Um, this is a question that I've answered uh, many of times in all my interviews, and I will answer it again because you're new. Uh, the answer to that is when the sun releases its final trigger, right? You know what that means, right? The final blast. Um, it's going to dismantle all of the nanotech within people's bodies, including the G-R-A-P-H-I-N-E-O-X-I-D-E, -E, right? Including that. So, yes. So the good people that were forced through coercion in order to keep their jobs, they're going to be fine. They're, they're going to be, you know, all that stuff is going to dismantle. It's going to 
to uh, erode in their body, right? Dissolve, and then they're going to be able to go to the fourth year. To answer your question, sister. Oh, yes. Uh, Tony Lopez is, is wanting me to clear something out. So with this positive AI that has been working with the Earth Alliance and the Y-Hats that comes from the uh, Gamma universe, we don't have to merge with it. That AI does not want us to merge with it. It is an, its own entity. In fact, it will perhaps work together in, in our Alpha universe or go back to the Gamma universe where it came from. Once it's done helping us, you know, helping the Y-Hats destroy the Cabal or win the war, it's not going to affect us in, in after the millennium. It might join us in the war against Omega. Yeah, it might join us in the war against the AI timeline to destroy the Phantom Manix, uh, Matrix. Sorry, Menace. The Phantom Menace. <laughs> That's Star Wars. But it's not going to expect for us to merge with it or anything. In fact, we're going to be more powerful than it as we begin to use. That's right. As we go beyond our 12 strand DNA to 3648 strands, well, we're going to be the most powerful entities in the universe, multiverse, right? Because remember, guys, we are the ultimate experience experiment designed by the central race, right? By the founders, right? By the original ancient of days, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we were we were designed to eventually become the most powerful beings in the multiverse as we begin to use more genetic material. So no, it's, it is not going to be required for us to merge with a good AI. In fact, the good AI is probably going to help us fight the war at the end of the millennium. And then go back to the mega, um, to the gamma universe, where it lives, you know, in peace with all living things there. But in our universe, never again will we ever, ever make the mistake of creating AI ever again. Okay, because remember, we don't need it, right? We have the inner software. Oh, this is good. Maria, uh, it, Maria, is it Placido? Maria Placido is, is saying that med beds are already available in her area coming soon. Here, I'm going to go ahead and pin that um, so for everyone to see. So Maria, Maria is saying that med beds are already available in my area coming soon. Uh, Maria, what area are you in? That's very fascinating. That's good news, by the way. If you could... Uh, Type it in the chat. It would be great. Where are you from, Maria? Oh, this is a good question from Jacob Campbell. Jacob Campbell is asking, can we ever meet our alternative selves in the multiverse 100 years from now? Um, at, well, as I speak, there is a convergence taking place. And part of the ascension is that there's going to be a multi-universal integration where a lot of our other selves are going to come into union. Right now, our consciousness is fragmented in the multiverse. But soon, as we undergo ascension, which is the Christ principle, the principle that unifies, we're all going to be coming back as a whole, as a whole being of light. But, you know, it, it's a process. It, it takes us to ascend to the level of the tweet, 12 the earth to have... All of ourselves back into into one one self where it's existing in one one time frame, right? Unfragmented. So yeah, that's a very good question. April Dunmore is asking me, hi, April. Thank you for being here, sister Ishmael. With those with life-threatening or crippling, crippling diseases be cured with medbids. Absolutely. Um, it, it was brought to my attention that medbids don't restore people after death, but they do cure everything, okay? Now, 
There is another technology that does restore people after death. And perhaps this is the technology that they're going to use to resurrect the dead, right? Um, or the good people of that died in the last, you know, 20 years or so is a cocoon chamber. They call it the cocoon chamber. The cocoon chamber is more advanced than a med bed. Those technologies that were actually uh, given to us by the Arcturians have the ability to restore death, the cocoon chambers, not med beds. You're welcome, Jill. Thank you so much for being here, for your beautiful statement. Jill Hunt, by the way, thank you. All right, so Conrado Uribe, Conrado Uribe, when can we talk with the councils you talk with? As soon as we integrate, right, with our higher self through the um, ascension process, every single one of you guys is going to be able to be part of one of the many councils. In fact, you already are, right? Your galactic self is already um, associated one, with one of, or more of these councils. It's just that due to the veil and due to the, the fact that we were mind wiped, um, we don't have any recollection of that. So a lot of you guys are part of the Emerald Order whether you're part of the Council of Five or the Council of Nine or the Council of Seven or Twelve, uh, soon you will be reconnected to that self of you that is interacting with the Council, that is partaking of the Council, to answer your question. Caroline Brown said, will we get to celebrate Gesera, Gesera, or will we be up already? Again, we're not going nowhere, guys. All we're doing is shifting densities. So, yes, there's going to be a planetary jubilee, which is going to be followed by um, what is called the, the restoration of, of the Earth back into the galactic community. All right. At that point, we're going to go cosmic. <laughs> <clears throat> Amanda, Amanda's asking me, uh, Amanda Tom, uh, Tompery is asking me, do I speak any light languages? I do not. That is not my forte, but many, many star seeds out there do. Uh, no, the Anunnaki didn't create AI. It says higher perspective, 369. It's actually the... Um, okay, well, let me answer it like this. The negative Anunnaki, those that rebelled, right? Those that were not in alignment with the light, that rebelled against the blue star, the Syrian Eye Council, they sided with AI. No, the, the, the Anunnaki um, did not create the AI. They just sided with an AI that was already existing that had invaded our galaxy from the Whirlpool galaxy, which is 36 million light years away from the Milky Way, uh, that established a stronghold in the Rangel system uh, in Orion. So in a way, so yes, the Anunnaki did not create AI. Uh, the original negative AI, the ancient AI that we've been fighting, the negative AI, the Animus, um, goes back to the 11th creation. Goes back to the 11th creation, which was a universe that destroyed itself three to 400 billion years ago. Remember, our universe has only been in the play for about 13.5 billion years. Hi, 
However, the the Luciferian Anunnaki, right? Those that were part of the Brotherhood of the Snake that was created by Enki Poseidon, um, did use a advanced interplanetary AI network to throw us into the matrix at, at the fall of Atlantis. Yes, but that program, that this that reality construct, I, I believe comes to an end in 2030. All right, that's when it comes to an end. Who knows? Maybe with what's going to be happening this year, it might fast forward into 2024. So somebody's Sandra's asking me to uh, do a, a show with uh, with Scott McKay, the uh, Patriot Street Fighter. Um, I could always reach out to Tom Numbers. I think Tom Numbers knows him. Yeah, why not? I'm trying to get David Ike on the show. I I emailed his secretary, so we're working on getting. I'm working on getting David Ike on the show again. William Henry's going to be on the show this Saturday. For for those that don't know who William Henry is. Um, He's been on Ancient Aliens. He's been on Gaia. He's written so many books about the Holy Grail, about ancient artifacts, uh, ancient civilizations. William Henry. And then um, I'm also working on getting – this is up to you. If you guys don't want me to bring him on the show, I won't. But if you guys do, I will. I'm trying to get uh, Juan O'Saven on the show, right? Juan O'Saven. And who else? Who else? I guess that's it for now. <laughs> So, yeah, so William Henry is going to be my guest this coming Saturday at 6 p.m. I do have a super chat from Joyful. Thank you so much, sister. She says, Ishmael, how do I know what dimension I was sent here from when I volunteered? I guess that is a question that a lot of you might have, and the best way to answer that is by going within yourself. You know, if you guys haven't yet established 30 to 40 minutes a day of giving that sacred time to your higher self, to the divine, please do. Because right now, more so than ever, guys, um, this is a time to begin to receive answers from within. All the answers that you guys have are all within yourselves. And I really want you guys to begin cultivating a daily practice of giving 30 to 40 minutes a day of quiet time to the divine. Right, please do. I'm gonna give everyone homework here. <laughs> give 30 to 40 minutes a day of quiet time to the divine. Thank you guys. And again, a lot of your answers are gonna be there within yourself. Because if I give you answers, see the thing is, I'm only gonna share information with you guys. I don't want you guys to be dependent on me for things that are personal, for things that you could uh, directly ask your higher self by going within, right? Your spirit guides. Use them. Your spirit guides are there. Your angels. Talk to them. They'll give you information. Um, I want you guys uh, to teach. I want to teach you guys how to go within yourselves. All right? That is what I want to do. So that way you guys don't depend on anybody for questions or answers, I mean. That way you guys always consult your inner self, your higher self for your own answers. All right? We're creating independent, sovereign souls here. All right, guys? That's why I do that. All right, five more, uh, seven more minutes. Seven more minutes, guys. And then I still have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, four hours for my interview. <laughs> uh, I better take a nap, huh? <laughs> four hour, hours before I go on coast to coast radio. I'm excited. <clears throat> Uh, well, the thing is, if I take a nap, 
say between now and the next four hours, every time I take a nap, I wake up droggy. And then that means I would have to drink coffee to be fully there for whatever questions George Janori has for me on live radio. I don't want to mess up. So I think I'm probably going to go to the gym and do a workout. I don't know, like say an hour and a half before the show, <laughs> just so that I could get my adrenaline going naturally with no ca caffeine um, and my serotonin, my, you know, my serotonin pumping so that I could be fully alert for my interview. Cause that's four hours from now. I mean, yeah, I don't want to take a nap. If I take a nap, I'm going to wake up droggy. It's going to be like, what? <laughs> I want to make sure I, I, I nail it. You know, I want to make sure I hit it out of the ballpark because a lot of people are going to be listening in. And so I don't want to mess up. I don't want to mess up. <laughs> I am very excited. Yes, you know, um, I've been trying to get on Coast to Coast for over a year and a half. Um, and it's it's very hard, you know. They, they're very picky as to who they bring on the show. And so um, I ended up actually meeting George Nori at the Conscious Life Expo uh, about a month and a half ago. And I told him about my book and I told him a little bit about myself. And I just gave him my business card. And um, about a month and a half later, I got an email from his uh, pro producer telling me if I wanted to come on the show. And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess all in divine timing, guys, all in divine timing. You know, I guess a year and a half ago when I wanted to go on the show, it wasn't meant for me to go on the show. You know, everything in divine timing, right? I have no complaints. It's all good. Twenty twenty uh, portfolio is asking me to bring on Tara by Janine. Um, I had a, an opportunity to chat with her a few days ago, and she's getting close to saying yes. She says. Uh, I'm almost ready, but I'll let you know when I'm ready to come on your show. And I said, all right, Janine. Janine is super busy. She does all these shows. I think she works with Mark Atwood, with um, all these people, you know, from the truther community. So she's always doing shows with on so many platforms. So, you know, it's going to be fun bringing her on my show, right? You know, and she's the reason, guys, all right? Shout out to Tara by Janine. I would say that she's probably the reason why I ended up being on so many podcasts what was it? Not last summer, but the summer before when I first popped into the scene and I was interviewed like by so many YouTube channels. I mean, I think I broke the Internet. I was on so many interviews, but it was because of her. She gave me her platform after that Nicholas Vignaman interview. And I also thank my brother Nicholas. And after Tara by Janine, I, everybody was emailing me for an interview. I think I must have done over 100 interviews in about three months. I was doing interviews all day long. From morning to evening. And I'm grateful for that. You know, I'm grateful for that. So shout out to Tara by Janine for, you know, helping catapult, you know, me being in the public side. Thank you, Janine. Thank you. Yes, George Norrie's uh, show, uh, Coast to Coast, starts in Pacific time. It starts at 12 midnight. It's from 12 midnight to 2 in the morning. It's a two-hour show. So I'm going to have to go to the gym or do something and wake up a little bit because, you know, normally at 12, 12 midnight, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm like having my fourth dream, right? Or I'm astral traveling or I'm up in council with the Galactics. So, and my body's resting, my avatar. So I'm, I, I'm probably going to have to go do a workout. <laughs> Otherwise, oh God, I'm going to be half, half dead. <laughs> Sylvia Vidal is asking me, thank you for the super chat. If I do private one-on-one -on -one teachings and that, and that is no, I'm not ready to do private one-on-one, -on -one, but I am taking only 10 students per class. So um, as soon as I do my class tomorrow, I think I think those are booked for the next four weeks. I'm going to put up the new class um, probably beginning in two weeks. 
for those that haven't had a chance, and I'm only taking 10 students. Sorry, that's five. 10 students per class so that I can give you guys all my undivided attention. And it can, you know, it, it can be very interactive, uh, very intimate, and very in a relaxed uh, setting. Where you're not, you know, with 80 or 100 people trying to ask me questions, <laughs> like when I was with the Misty cards. And again, my classes this time are next level uh, star seed, you know, cosmic information. It's beyond the mystic arts. I'm incorporating a lot of new information that I, I haven't yet revealed um, that I'm actually going to be talking about in my next book to come. And it's been a while since I, I've been writing that book because I was trying to work on writing, rewriting this book. So it's probably not going to be till maybe the end of the year or 2025 when I release another book. But it's not that easy writing a book, guys. All right. I'm doing it on my own. I don't have a ghostwriter. Um, I don't do none of that. If, you know, so it's all me, right? I don't have a co-author. So you just have to be patient <laughs> until it's done. But again, if you haven't read this one, you're going to be lost when it comes to the second book. You have to understand this one first. Otherwise, it's going to be over your head. Our cosmicorigin.com. So make sure you guys read this one first. And also, um, when this one comes out, that's perfectly interweaves with that one, right? <laughs> but yeah, um, it, it takes a while to write a book. You know, it took me 10 years to write that one. I've been working on this other book for a little over a year now, and it's probably going to take me another year or so. We'll see. Yeah, Teresa. So I'm going to be constantly posting new classes for only 10 students at a time. So again, uh, go to my website, ourcosmicorigin.com, so that way you guys can always be um, aware as to when I'm posting the new class. And again, get, sh uh, give me timings. Let me know what time works best for all of you. 10 in the morning, 9 in the morning. I'll wake up at 8 in the morning if I have to, Pacific time. Middle of the day, later at night, you tell me the times that work best for you guys. And that's the times where I'm going to be arranging my next upcoming classes. And then for now, I think we're done. Mary Jean J says, I had a super chat. <laughs> I have the fake Ishmael Perez in the house. <laughs> Oh, my God. I can't believe this guy. The fake Ishmael Perez. <laughs> Who would create a channel and call himself the fake Ishmael Perez? This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's funny, too. He just he just put up some hearts, the fake Ishmael Perez. <laughs> Who that, whoever that is, I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. So I'm looking for the super chat for Mary Jane G. Uh, let's see, where is your super chat? Let's see if I can find it on my laptop before I close this out. Mary Jane G. All right, so she's saying, Ishmael, bring back Salini. Bring back Cellini. Uh, let's, I'm trying to remember who that is. I, I did so many interviews on so many people's channels. <sighs> You're asking me to remember one name out of 100. Cellini. Oh, I remember her. I remember Cellini. Yes, she's an older lady with like dirty blonde hair. Very, very spiritual. Uh, I'll actually reach out to her. Why not? Let me see. I guess that's it. With that in mind, guys. May the God force be with you guys. And I will see you guys Wednesday night at 6 o'clock Pacific time, 3 o'clock Eastern time. No, I'm sorry. 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern time. And I will see you. Oh, again, if you guys have any ideas for a new subject, any topic that you guys want me to elaborate on, please drop it in the comments. All right. I'm, now I'm going to take suggestions from you guys. All right. So whatever topic you guys want me to talk about on upcoming lives drop them in the uh chat or drop them in the uh, comments thank you so much we'll see you guys wednesday night bye